Scooby-Doo, where are you? That is a question I think people already know the answer to. He is everywhere, and he will unmask those who have committed dastardly crimes. After all, the true monsters are us. So growing up, I was a big Scooby-Doo fan. Even now, I look back on some of those classic episodes and remember how good they were. Though I never thought this series would last as long as it has. In fact, we are still getting new Scooby-Doo shows, but I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about the video games. And for this month of spooks, I thought it might be time to revisit a game from my childhood and see how well it holds up. So without further ado, here are my two cents on Scooby-Doo, Night of a Hundred Frights. If we can count on you, be Scooby-Doo, I know we'll catch that villain. The game starts like any old episode of Scooby-Doo. The gang is called to investigate a spooky mansion by Daphne's friend, who we have never heard before, Holly. She tells us that her uncle, Professor Alexander Graham, has disappeared without a trace and no one will search the area because... Don't tell me! Because it's haunted, right? Yeah, Shaggy. How'd you know? Because it's always haunted! Jeepers! The gang decides to investigate, with Shaggy and Scooby staying behind to do... stuff... until Shaggy falls into a hole and Scooby is left alone. Guess this is a solo Scooby adventure, then. So, Scooby is off to find the gang, and it will take him through haunted roofs, scary underground caves, shark-infested waters, and even a literal dungeon! What? Didn't you know that all mansions have torture dungeons? It's an interesting standard. Scooby-Doo! Night of a Hundred Frights is your standard 3D platformer of its era. However, it also adds its own twist on things. For starters, the progression is still linear, but you will be hopping all over the map. Like when you start the game, you will go into the mansion, but hit a roadblock and need the football helmet power-up to proceed. But in order to get that power-up, you will need the springs from the docks so you can get a key to open the hedge maze, and then get the helmet. It's a rather Metroidvania-esque type of progression, but it's not really non-linear. Though, to get to new areas, you will need to gather Scooby Snacks along the way, so it's got some collect-a-thon elements there, too. Anyway, these power-ups can range from useful to situational. It's telling that the first one you get is a shovel from a Don Knotts cameo, and is never required after digging up this one key. And I often forget it's a power-up in the game, too. In fact, the other power-up he gives you to walk silently is also useless. At least you can get a better version that just makes you invisible to enemies. So, sorry, Groundskeeper, but at least you tried. If only I could use that shovel as a weapon for these enemies, then I could get more out of it. Oh well, it's not like combat is hard or anything. All you need to do is just headbutt all these monsters and they will go down in one, or sometimes two, hits. Though I have to wonder how Scooby's head isn't broken. This game is called Night of a Hundred Frights, so all the enemies are classic Scooby-Doo monsters. You got the Creeper, Werewolf, Caveman, a Gargoyle, and whatever this fish thing is. To be honest, I wish the monsters were more varied in their attacks. Most of the time, these monsters will just charge at you. Oh well, at least the bosses offer something different. After Scooby explores long enough, he runs into Velma, who seems to be held captive. Then we get introduced to our antagonist, Mastermind, who is voiced by the wonderfully wonderful Tim Curry. And my god, he is so perfect for this role. He even sings his boss theme when you fight him. I have no doubt I'm in control. You may think chasing ghosts is thrilling. You need to know who's running the show. Anyway, Mastermind tells us he has brought all of Scooby's old foes back, and we get our first boss, the Black Knight. Fitting, as it was the first episode of Scooby-Doo. The boss fights in this game are more puzzle-based. In each one, you can't hit them directly, so it's all about figuring out the puzzle. For the Black Knight, it's all about hitting these things right when he is lined up with them. All these fights are rather easy, except maybe the red beard one, as these ghosts can be annoying sometimes given their positioning. But they are a nice change from the standard combat of the game. They even have their own songs with lyrics and everything. Another nice callback to classic Scooby-Doo. And this is one of my favorite things about the game. Scooby-Doo Night of a Hundred Frights is filled with charm. 
I even like the laugh track, a laugh track in a video game. The environments are all rather nice and varied, and the music just sounds right off of classic Scooby-Doo. Another one of my favorite things is the monster gallery. While playing the game, you will encounter these monster tokens. On their own, they do, well, nothing, but getting one lets you unlock a full 3D model of that monster, which you can view in the monster gallery, as well as showing what episode they are from and some bit of Scooby-Doo trivia. Sure, this stuff is less exciting now because we live in an age where wikis are a thing, but I always thought this was a cool thing about the game. As a kid, I didn't recognize most of these monsters, so finding out that there are more Scooby-Doo episodes was kind of exciting. Anyway, let's get back to that story. So after dealing with the Black Knight, Velma loses her glasses and thinks she sees the Creeper when getting her glasses back. Scooby then goes to deal with the Green Ghost and defeats it with Daphne's help. Holly shows up and both her and Daphne end up getting separated from Scooby. Oh shit. Here we go again! <laughs> then Scooby goes fight Redbeard to save Freddy. After that is done, I guess it's time to head to the secret lab. No joke, I really like this part of the game. It's a nice new, smaller area for the end game. Though there is a huge amount of acid. But why? Well, it turns out all these monsters were just really advanced holograms. And I guess you need a few truckloads of acid to make one. So now it's end game, and Fred has come up with a plan, but Scooby will need to be the bait. So after Velma promises a box of Scooby snacks, Scooby defeats the mastermind, and we get teleported to the front entrance of the manor. And who is underneath the mask? Why, it's Professor Alexander Graham! Uh, oh, I, I meant, I meant Holly. Hey, at least it's not the groundskeeper. And with that, the day is saved, I guess. And that ends the game! So coming back to this game years later was a blast. I did not think that the game would hold up this well as it did. Scooby controls very, very well, and whenever I got to a new area, I just wanted to keep playing the game more and more and more. My biggest gripe is the audio. Now, the music is fine, but the voice lines are really compressed. I got used to it with time, but it's just an odd choice. Overall, the game is not long and beatable in about 4 hours. I enjoyed it a lot and I would recommend it for Scooby-Doo fans. Scooby-Doo is 50 years old, and that is rather impressive. While the series as a whole has its ups and downs, it's good to know that at least some of its games still hold up. With all that said, my name is Gumshoe, and thanks for watching.